and spending on wearable technology devices will hit $1.4 billion this year. By 2018, sales will skyrocket to $19 billion. That's all according to Jupiter Research. And when you combine that with the ongoing boom in video game sales, that's some serious market potential. CCTV's Michelle McCory spoke to Min Liang Tan, CEO of Razer, about all the latest trends in wearable tech as well as gaming. I think the biggest difference is that it's not like the traditional smartwatch, it's not a smartwatch, it's not a fitness band. It actually combines the best of both a smartwatch and a fitness band into a single product. So it basically streams everything from your phone, it could be an Android phone or, or an iOS phone, right to your wrist. You know, you could be getting all the notifications on your wrist. Um, you don't have to pull out the, you know, your phone all the time. And uh, pretty much um, it's an open platform, so anyone can pretty much um, develop apps on the uh, smart bands. Now, in terms of wearable tech, are we basically just seeing a smartphone on your wrist? Has there been anything more revolutionary in terms of functions that you wouldn't be able to access through your phone? Wow, well, you know, the whole point about wearable tech is really to understand um, a person or to get this, um, there's this term called quantified data, where essentially we get every amount of uh, data that, you know, from daily lives, whether the amount of uh, steps you take, the people you interact with, all that kind of stuff can come from wearable data, uh, from wearable tech um, instead of a smartphone. Let me give you an example. So if you've got a Nabu band and I've got a Nabu band, we could shake hands and instead of having to exchange name cards, that could trigger uh, essentially an ad hoc um, wireless network to exchange uh, our contact details. That sounds good, but that also sounds a little intimidating, a little scary, and you mentioned this constant data collection. Yeah. And one of the big concerns lately has been this prevalence of big companies collecting data, how many steps I take, how much I sleep, where I've been. How does your company maintain that ethical line? Well, we take user data very, very seriously. And in fact, that is one of the most important things that we've been focused on. Essentially, what we've done is to lay it out really simply to the, to the user um, what kind of data he would like to collect, um, if he even wants it to be collected, so to speak, and more importantly, whether he wants to share that data with anyone. So there's going to be a utility app on the smartphone where he can um, pretty much define every single aspect of the data that is collected. Does otherwise. Razor as a company store that data? We do not store that data per se. Um, what we do is to get that information, we put it in the hands of the user and uh, pretty much leave the user to kind of uh, decide what he wants to do with it. So what are the big trends that we can expect to see in the wearable tech space? Gamification. There's this real um, crossover of uh, wearable tech and gamification at the same time. Let me give an, another example, right? Um, so if we could track uh, heart rate, let's say through headphones, mm -hmm. um, we could be playing a game at this point of time, and it could get harder as your heart rate goes up. So you've got to try to steal yourself and, and learn to, to bring your heart rate down. Because if the game gets too intense, your heart rate goes up. But if it goes up, it gets harder. So it's, it's stuff like that. And I think gamification is going to be the biggest trend for wearable tech in the near future. Well, in the past, you have said that it is OK to waste time and that gaming is certainly not a waste of time. And uh, those words have uh, proven to be very accurate in your case, especially now with the development of this phenomenon called esports, where people pay to watch other people play games. Mm -hmm. tell, tell us more about that. Well, you know, I used to be a competitive gamer myself. You know, my parents all the time, traditional Asian parents were saying, no, please don't waste your time. You know, don't spend your time playing computer games, go study and stuff like that. But it's always been a passion for myself and I've been playing competitively. Now, back then, the prize, um, the payoff wasn't so great. But today, we're looking at games that have million dollar pots. You could be playing a game and winning a million dollars. And um, we're seeing a huge amount of people watching uh, eSports Online live. You know, uh, it's one of the most watched uh, sports events in the world. Give me a sense of size and scope. How many people are watching other people play games? Well, you know, to give an example, uh, there are more people watching some of these games than uh, Game 3 of the World Series. You know, to put that in scope, we've got millions of people concurrently streaming and watching these live. And, and for us, you know, we've been supporters of eSports um, pretty much right from the inception all the way till today. We're seeing massive sponsors coming into the, the scene. It's pretty much exploding at this point of time. And eGamers are now recognized 
as professional athletes, is that correct? Yes, they can get a visa into the, into the United States uh, being an athlete. That was Michelle McCory speaking with Min Liang Tan, CEO of Razor.